afternoon. How are we? And welcome to episode four of our urban homesteading introduction or introduction homesteading. Da 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 da. Um, urban, yeah, open homesteading. That's oh, words are hard today. I'm really sorry, guys. I'm doing my best right now. Um, so today we're going to be looking at what equipment is actually really necessary. Okay, when when we first all start out, a lot of people, you know, throw a lot of information your way, and you get these big long lists of stuff that you're supposed to have, and all of the stuff, and you know. Most of us are like sitting there looking at it going, why? <laughs> I don't have that much money and so, you know, or where am I going to put it all? Okay, so we're going to try and answer some of those and to make life a little bit easier for everybody and look at exactly what is really necessary. Okay, so hello to Mr. Tony Kettle Kitchen. How are you, Suburban Hillbilly? Hello. Annie's Kitchen and Urban Garden. Hello, Annette, darling. How are you? Nana Nine Acres. Hello. Hi, Nana. How are you doing, darling? <laughs> it's really good to see you guys. Thank you so much for being here. So we're going to start off in my favorite room in the house, and that is the kitchen. Now, I did a little bit of research today. I'm not going to lie because I wanted to see what other people had had. On their lists now from what I saw most of the lists were done by people who are Amazon affiliates and they were all links to Amazon products so can I just say ignore them <laughs> ignore them all okay because honestly a lot of the stuff that they suggest is number one, if, if you're living in the UK and you're really worried about electric uses at the moment, don't bother, okay? Um, because a lot of it was electrical equipment. And things like bread makers and blenders and processors and mixers and all of the things that cost a lot of money to run and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So we really don't want all of that. Okay. Yes, it's nice to have. And yes, most of us have some of that stuff already. And that's cool. That's not a problem. But if you're just starting out and you just want to know exactly what you really need, okay, you just want to look at the very, very basics. Now, from a budgeting point of view, that means keeping it right down to bare minimums and just getting the bare essentials of what you need. Yes, Tony, it can be all done by hand. So I've made my own list, okay, because these are the very, um, very bare bones of what I think are necessary in the kitchen and the stuff that I've had to start with. I've had to start with less than on this list, okay, before. So um, I just wanted to share my list with you, okay. So we've got a chef's knife, which is a nice big long one that you can wave around at people and tell them to get out of your kitchen. You know, that, that's always a good one. Um, a paring knife, which is the little, little knife. Um, yes, some is useful, some is a lot of clutter. You're absolutely right, Suburban Hillbilly. Um, a selection of jars, lids, bottles and tops. Now, unless you live in a country where you use the mason jars and the two-piece lid system. Most of us everywhere else, what we do is we recycle our jam jars or our jars that we get other things in. Um, we make sure that the lids are okay. This one is actually in really good condition. There's no rust on it. There's no marks on it. They're, that can be reused. So, that you know, save up all your jars, your glass bottles mostly. Um, and you can get... If you're not sure about the lids on a glass bottle, you can from home brew shops or home brew supply, supply places get a little plastic like cork and use those to seal your bottles with. They're really, really cheap. And you can buy replacement lids of any size on places like um, eBay and places like that. So, you know, it doesn't have to be expensive. It's just recycling. The next thing on my list is a good stock pot, okay? 
if you've got nothing else, if you've got no other pots in the house, a good stock pot, you can cook your pasta in it, you can do your sauce for your pasta in it, you can do everything that you possibly could possibly ever need in that stock pot, okay? And it's going to do everything that you want it to do. So if you've got nothing else and you want to get one saucepan or one pot for your kitchen, I would suggest getting a really good stock pot, okay? Um, and a really good fry pan, a decent sized one, one that's about a good 28 to 30 centimeters across. Um, yes, you can, you can water bath in it. Absolutely right. You can, you can water bath in it as well. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with your stock pot and it's a very, very useful item to have. So if you've got nothing else, you know, use that. And yeah, the next one is a really good fry pan, at least 30 centimeters across, which is about a foot, 12 inch fry pan. Really, really good one. I love my cast iron skillet. Yes, cast iron skillet. If you can get cast iron and you can afford that, go for it. That's just really awesome. Now, when it comes down to utensils, the three that I use the most in my kitchen, and I have mine here, I have props. Okay, now I call this my magic wand. Now, this is a rubber spatula. You can stir hot pots with this. You can do your sauces with it. You can do all of that sort of stuff, plus do all your cake baking and all of the things. You can use it as a butter knife to do a whole heap of different sandwiches. If you've got like 300 children, you can get everyone's sandwiches done really, really quickly. You just load it up with butter and just use it like a knife. There are so many things you can do with it. It's absolutely amazing. They're pretty cheap to get, but make sure you get a proper rubber one, not the silic, well, or silicon rather than rubber. It's not rubber anymore, is it? It's silicon. But the silicon ones you can use in a hot pan to, you know, scrape the sides and stuff like that. So this is my magic wand. It's absolutely my magic wand. You can do everything with it. The next one is a really good whisk. Now, this one is a catering grade whisk. It's a proper chef's whisk. It's a balloon whisk. And it has the wires, as you can see, are uh, individually poked into a plate um, in that, in there, in the handle. Okay, now that gives it stability. It's not going to pull out. It's not going to, you know, cause issue. It also has this piece at the top that's twisted like that because it means that you can get into the corners of your pots. So if you're actually whisking a sauce, you can get right into that corner of the pot so it doesn't burn or catch. Okay, now I use this for loads of different things. Not only do I use it for whisking, but I always use it for making my gravy and other sauces um, and stuff like that. But I also use it as a masher for mashed potatoes. So, you know, because I find that it's a lot easier that way. Um, I do have a potato ricer, they call it, um, but that's just fancy and just happens to be an odd piece of, you know, equipment that we like that we spoilt ourselves and bought. But if you're just starting out, a whisk will do all of those things for you. Okay. Now, the next one is this one, your fish slice. Um, some people call it a spatula. It's actually a fish slice. But for everything that you're doing in the fry pan or to get things off a baking sheet, that's what you want. And it's also really good for serving stuff out. So, you know, it, it's a piece of equipment that you can use for all sorts of stuff. Um, I find this much more easy than a spoon or anything like that so yeah those are the three essential utensils that i have in my kitchen and i won't have a kitchen without them you know um so look annie got hers her cast iron for her cast iron skillet for 36 dollars australian from the camping shop yeah awesome um Thank you, Tony. <laughs> I brought all my cast iron from the damage section at the lodge outlet. They just had tiny scratches that seasoned out. 
and and sometimes that's the way i mean the cast iron that i had when i was living when the boys were little um i got from secondhand charity shops it was stuff that people were just upgrading or they didn't want any more and stuff like that and i just picked it up for really really cheap because that's what you do you don't have to buy it brand new if that's what you want it's about looking for what you can afford so the next thing i'll put on here is a measuring jug um, one that has all your measurements and stuff on the side they're not always really accurate but if you tend to get one like a pyrex one they tend to have to be because they're actually checked so be really careful with those um but yeah a measuring jug is always really handy measuring cups now these are really really important too because obviously if you're baking and you need measuring cups that's always a really good thing however if you do not have one of those but you've managed to find like a little antique teacup in an op shop charity shop thrift shop whatever you want to call it that is actually a proper cup size that's where the cup measurements came from is from those antique teacups okay because that's all people had was their best or their favorite teacup and that's what they use for their baking so yeah also measuring spoons if you can get measuring spoons that's really really cool if you can't and you happen to be in the same secondhand charity shop okay this is where you're measuring you know, and you can find some little old silver teaspoons tablespoons dessert spoons and a serving spoon that's where you cut your actual measurement spoons come from okay so they're going to be actually more accurate than most measuring spoons that i know of um so if you can find those that's always a good option um and you tend to be able to find them for pennies because people are just chucking them out all left right and center but yeah they have to be the really old deep ones okay a good kitchen scales now you can get them fairly cheaply and that's really cool but i would invest in a decent set of kitchen scales because the more accurate they are the better it is for your whatever it is you're doing um but again you can pick them up pretty cheaply because you know it's what we do a colander or a sieve now it doesn't matter if it's a colander or a sieve a sieve can be more useful than a colander but if you've got old fabric or some muslin cloth then a colander can work just as well as a sieve okay so it's potatoes potatoes when it comes to that kind of thing a cake tin now a decent cake tin with a with a spring form base where the base comes away is a really really good friend of the kitchen now you can do your pies in it you can do your cakes in it you can do your quiches in it you can do anything you want in it okay pretty much as long as it's a spring form if it's a solid bottom cake tin there's only certain things you can do in it and it won't work as well as a cake tin for things like pastry so yeah um but yeah, cake tin is really, really cool. I have a cake tin that I have several different designs of base for. Now, the reason that I did that was because one's a teddy bear, there's a sheep, there's a, I think there's a Christmas wreath on one of them. So if I had nothing else, I had a cake tin that I could actually do, um, you know, different seasons or events of cakes just with that one cake tin okay and you can pick those up pretty cheaply as well so just be aware of that um in the us your mason jars can be used as measuring vessels as well yes they can yes they can over here if you look at if you want to invest in a jar of um like ragu I want to say ragu okay so it's like dolmio but it's the one in the square jar for those of you who live in the uk and australia the ragu one actually has measurements on the side okay so be aware of that um 
a baking sheet. Now you only really need one of these, to be honest. Okay, you only really need one um, when you're first starting out because you can just swap it around. It's a bit of a faff, but you know, it, it's it is what it is. And if you're just starting out, you do what you can, you know. Um, you also want to have a knife steel or a sharpening stone or a knife sharpener because the worst thing in your kitchen, the most dangerous thing in your kitchen is a blunt knife. Okay, so make sure that your knives are kept sharp all the time. Okay, you use it, use the steel. Once a month or once every six months, get it on a knife sharpener so that you can actually make sure that all those little bits of metal are right exactly where they need to be and it's completely honed properly. Okay, wooden spoons or silicon spatulas, what is my preference? I actually really love wooden spoons. I love them. I have millions of them. But I really love, I really do love this. Okay. Now, if I'm, for wooden, I would prefer to use this on something that is a little bit more, more likely to taint the wooden spoon because it's less likely to taint the silicon. But for the wooden spoons, I tend to prefer wetter things if that makes sense, or mixing of things in a in a baking bowl kind of stuff. All right, so they're the things. They're the they're the big things. Okay, they that's it. I mean, like most people have got bowls and plates and stuff like that. Bowls can be reused for things like puddings, like steamed puddings, or small cakes and things like that if that's what you want to do they go in the oven they'll go in a in a basin of water to steam they'll do all of those kinds of things so you can reuse things um you know as you want to or need to okay yes a box grater is a multi-use tool as well absolutely it is however you can get away without it um I have, okay, so a box grater is an awesome tool and it is really, really cool, but it is the kind of thing that you need to spend a little bit of money on if you're going to get a decent one because the really, really cheap ones break down very easily and tend to fall apart within about a year with really good use, okay? Um, I have one. I love it. I really, really do. I love this one so much because it's not falling apart and the handle's not coming off in my hand anymore. So I really, really do love it. Um, I should have put that on there and I didn't even think of it. Thank you, Tony. Um, yeah, neither scratch cast iron. They're brilliant. Yep. Okay. So that is it for the kitchen. Now I know people will go, but what about this? And what about that? And what about something else? You know what? It's not a necessity to starting off. Sure, if you're going to make loads of muffins, get a muffin tin. If you're going to be doing a lot of roasting of meats, get a roasting dish. You know, what I'm saying is these are the absolute essentials that you would need to start off from nothing. Okay. And, and to have, to be able to do probably 90% of the stuff in your kitchen, okay? Um, it's all pretty inexpensive, um, especially like when it comes down to the jars and things because, well, it is for us because we don't use mason jars, but, you know, um, you know, you do save a fortune grating your own cheese. Yeah, all those you mentioned are correctly a starter kitchen. Exactly. And this is what it is. Is if This is a starter kitchen. Okay. So everything else can come with time. You don't have to do it straight away. It's not necessary off the bat. Everything I've given you will keep you going for months if that's all you've got right now. Okay. Um, just going to have a bit of a drink. Now, we're going to look at the garden, all right? I'm not going to be mentioning any power tools here throughout today, okay? Power tools are actually not a necessity. 
power tools and electrically driven equipment is not only expensive, it's expensive to run and it's no good to you if the lights go out. Okay. It's, it's, it's something that's there that a lot of us use a lot of it. I use a lot of it, but we don't have to. So I'm used, I'm just starting off with the stuff that you can use when you're just starting out and you've got nothing and you're not sure. Okay. I'm trying to make it a little bit easier for those who are going, oh, but I've got this list of a hundred million different things I have to have. Most of the things on my list you'll already have. So, you know. So in the garden, the main thing you're going to need is seeds. Okay, that's the main thing you're going to need in a garden is seeds. All right. If you have a garden that already has ground space rather than just concrete, okay, so then all you're going to really need is some cardboard boxes and some compost and just do some, you know, no dig beds rather than spending hours and days and months and years trying to dig up beds after beds after beds, you know, just set up a no dig bed. It takes 30 seconds. <coughs> okay, so Urban Helpy says, you're right, and I did things that way for several years. However, I have a back problem in neuropathy and those tools are a lifesaver. Absolutely they are. And I have a back problem and I can't stand for longer than 10 minutes. So, yes, I completely understand. <laughs> but I did. I absolutely did with my kids. And when I first brought up my kids and we went moved to the property um, years ago, um, that's all I had. It was basically what I could find in cheap shops. So we just had the bare essentials and had to just muddle on through with everything else. So cardboard boxes and cardboard rolls are going to be a lifesaver for you save all your cardboard boxes for making um no dig beds over lawn areas that you don't want to dig up but you want to put a bed down um the cardboard rolls can be used for um seed seed planting especially for those that don't like transplanting. So if you want to grow your carrots, but they're not ready for the bed, you're not ready for them to go in the bed that you want them to go in, I would put them in a full cardboard roll, like a full toilet roll. Um, the reason being that you're not going to be messing around with the root system. It's not going to be upset when it gets transferred out. Same with things like loofah seeds, like we were talking with ginger yesterday. Um, you know, and any other plant that's a bit of a diva. If it's something like a bean plant or something like that, you can put it in a half cardboard roll. Storage containers for the kitchen. Jars. <laughs> yes, you can get storage containers for the kitchens, but when you're first starting out, I mean, like I used old butter dishes, old ice cream containers, stuff like that, like whatever came in a plastic box, that was our storage seriously for months and months for a good year that's all we had was old margarine pots old ice cream containers takeaway containers stuff like that that's all the containers that we had so saving all those kinds of things are going to really really save you a lot of money in the long run um, when you're first starting out so then we've got Sticks and bamboo canes. So sticks or bamboo canes I've got here. If you've got the money to get bamboo canes, use them. If you've got gut bamboo growing on your property, cut some of it down and use some of it. It's not just there to be pretty. Use it. You know, sticks of varying sizes. You know, it might just be a piece of wood like this that you can just cut down if you've got something like that. Because I've got this post sitting in my office because, you know, everyone's got to have a piece of wood lying around, right? Um, or, you know, if you've had to, if you know someone who's been cutting down a tree and they've got some really decent sized branches, use those. You know, it's not always about buying all of the expensive stuff. 
zip ties zip ties in the garden are amazing okay no we don't want to be using a lot of plastic but if you've got zip ties and you don't have anything else zip ties are a boon for everything they're really really useful for putting together hoop houses um yeah um things like hoop houses for brassicas um they're really good for holding up certain plants obviously you don't want to tie them really tightly because they won't allow for growth if you don't um but it they they're good for all sorts of stuff and obviously inside the house as well as outside the house the other thing i would say is old stockings now if you're a lady you may have some old stockings lying around when they get laddered they are really good for tying up your vines in the garden because they do allow for growth okay so a certain extent but just don't make them so tight around the plant that they cut the plant can't move um they also make a really good kind of filter system if you need to um if you've got like a water butt all right now now stay with me here okay if you've got an old water if you've got a water butt that the water's coming straight through from the guttering and you're getting a lot of leaves and stuff coming in but you've got nothing to put on that covering to allow for the water to go through but not the leaves to go through use an old stocking okay honestly spread it over that at the bottom of the pipe and it will allow the water to come through and then you can go through afterwards when the rain stops take the leaves out okay so it makes life a lot easier um so it, it's very useful for stuff like that but there's all sorts you can do with an old stocking not robbing banks here okay i'm just saying all right so old plastic bottles and containers old plastic bottles especially two to five liter drink bottles really useful for growing certain things now you can start a herb garden in them you can start strawberries in them you can make vertical growing spaces with them you can grow all sorts in them in the bigger ones you can grow bigger things so some of the really big water water ones you can use that you can cut the top off and use them for growing things like daikon radish and other root vegetables which is really really cool okay so always keep your water bottles the other things you can do with the water bottles is do things like make a watering can if you don't have a watering can put a through few holes in to the lid of an old drink bottle and use that to water some of your seedlings because you know it's going to come through a lot easier uh, not as you know dumping um old pallet wood if you can get hold of old pallet wood it's always really useful to have that around you can pick it up from for industrial estates or places that have pallets all the time that are just looking to get rid of them just go and ask them and if they can have some old pallets and nine times out of ten they're going to say yes okay old pl blue plumbing pipe now i don't know if you guys if you all guys know <laughs> what i'm talking about so I'm, what i'm going to do um is i'm gonna have a look if i can find some i need an image there we go right so i'm gonna, just gonna share my um see if i can get this there we go right so i'm going to share my screen just very very quickly um oops that one screen okay it's mdpe pipe um if you can get hold of this stuff this is fantastic this is what i use to make the hoop part of my hoop houses okay um really really important to have hoop houses especially around brassicas this stuff met with some old scaffolding debris netting which should also be on your list um i didn't put it on mine okay but or any kind if, if you've got an old neck curtain it'll work if you've got um some 
fine muslin type cloth that would work as a brassica cage but what the um this does is you put this over two pipes so you got a pipe either side you cut off enough to make a hoop to go over the top and then you put your netting over it so it gives room for the brassicas to grow but the butterflies can't lay their eggs in there and they can only lay their eggs on the top of the netting um they can't get through the netting itself so the brassicas don't get eaten um by the caterpillars which is what we all want we don't want them taking over so yeah that that's what i use it's a really really good product um have a look on places like facebook marketplace or anywhere that might be able to might be using it plumber supply plate like a plumber themselves they may have some that's left over from a job that they don't want that they can't use for something else ask them if they've got any you know they might have some okay what are we doing in chat um if you've got bamboo on your property in the usa move <laughs> well see the thing is with bamboo i'm actually going to be growing some in pots this year the reason being is that i want to grow the bamboo so that i can have the shoots because the shoots in the asian grocery stores are really expensive but if i can grow my own bamboo i can get the shoots i get i can preserve the shoots i can water bath them and put them away for when i want them for cooking yeah good stuff right Tie soap scraps in an old stock in old stockings on your outdoor tap spigots. We call them taps over here. They're just taps, just an outdoor one. Um, for pre-washing hands before you go in the house, always a good plan. My thank you, Tony. Yeah, that yeah, we're not doing about recipes today, but yes, definitely learn some basic recipes. Check out op shops, thrift shores for stores for basic old-fashioned cookbooks yeah absolutely now we're gonna go to miscellaneous now this is where people go a little bit you know you'll notice that in the garden section i didn't talk anything about spades and shovels and stuff like that because honestly when you're just starting out setting up your garden they're actually not necessary if you do a no dig bed or you're doing containers what do you need a shovel for you don't need a shovel you don't need them you don't need a hoe you don't need a rake you don't need any of that because you can do all of that stuff by hand and it's not a big deal obviously if you've got those things that's great if you are looking to get those things for whatever reason that's great that's entirely up to you i'm just talking about just setting up and doing things from scratch as cheaply as you possibly can okay so the other thing with that is even if you live in an urban environment you're not going to be too far away from the local farms go and talk to the local farmers and see if you can get some of them in your from their animals and that way or and this one's even more fun if you've got guinea pigs rabbits or hamsters or any of those kind of rodents as pets make or you have a friend who has rodents as pets make very good friends with them and offer to take away their bedding it's going to make amazing mulch for your garden it is a cold manure so it can go straight on the beds um, and give them an added boost immediately um, it helps your friend or yourself from having to get rid of the stuff to start with um, but and it makes really good use for it you know you know it's it's really good and it helps everybody from trying to find a way to get rid of it in the end okay so you know this is all good really good stuff it's so if you can't get out to a local farm or whatever try and find a friend that's got a guinea pig or a rabbit or something like that that they don't mind you collecting their bedding on a weekly basis okay depends on where you live our ground was like concrete when we moved in hard pan clay you can still do no big dig beds on that and actually it would probably be better for your your ground if you did no dig beds okay so that would be your cardboard box 
your manure, your compost, your straw, and just do a lasagna bed and every year just add to it. Do chop and drop the whole way along and you'll find that actually the soil underneath will start to break up as the roots underneath because what you do with no-dig beds as well is you cut off the plant, you leave the root system in there. Okay, so eat, obviously not if it's potatoes or carrots or anything like that, but of all of the others, if you had tomatoes in the bed, just cut it off at the ground. If you had brassicas in the bed, just cut it off at the ground. Those root systems help to break up that dead pan clay underneath and to have a no-dig bed on top is actually going to be better off for your ground than trying to dig it all up and do all of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, honestly, trust me. Trust me. <laughs> it's, it's a lot better. Plus, dead hard pan clay is actually really good for a lot of plants. It's got a lot of minerals in it. Yes, it's difficult for getting rid of water and it can build up a lot and it can cause root rot on a lot of veg and stuff like that but like I said if you do the no dig method it's actually going to help to break down a lot of that issues back to Eden Garden here is a disaster it's a buffet for termites and fire ants ouch um see this is why I love these because there's a ton of good information oh thanks Tony okay so miscellaneous just starting out and you've just oh hi Rita we have chickens and their droppings and bedding are put in a separate place for a year to fertilize our garden exactly because it's a hot it's a hot manure whereas rabbits and guinea pigs and hamsters and you know even quail quail um their bedding takes three months rather than a year which is actually really really cool so you can actually use it in the same season which means less storage of the waste, which is awesome. Okay, so miscellaneous. We're going to be looking at things like rope. Rope for everything. Rope is just rope and you can use it for so many things. It's ridiculous, but rope is always a really good one to have around the place. Candles, an assortment of candles, different ones. I would suggest, my suggestion is this. Instead of going to places like Poundland and um, cheap shops and stuff like that and buying candles, go to the catering shops to get the candles. The candles there are generally, in general, most of the tea light candles they sell at um, catering supply places are eight hour candles and they sell them 500 to a box. Now that 500 is going to be a lot cheaper than buying them in the bags of 50. Um, yes, it is different for everyone depending on where you live. Absolutely it is. So I'm just going by a generalization, okay, of urban living, okay? So that's that's all I'm doing right now. So, yeah, get all sorts of different – ooh, hang on. Hi, Renee from Pike Creek Farm. Welcome in, darling. My husband had to get rid of huge burdocks and thistle from our garden area and prep it. He added a fence around it to keep the deer out. We have chickens, so that's great info about the manure. No problem, darling. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, chicken manure takes a, takes a year to break down. Yep. Okay. So, like I said, candles. If you can, get them from catering supply places. You're going to get a better deal. It's going to cost you less money. They're going to be a better quality because they have to be um but they're all gonna it's gonna be a lot you know it's better on the pocket in the long run okay the next one is notebook pens and pencils now people forget about this all the time they forget about having something to write on or having something to write with have a designated drawer in your like if you've got a dresser or you know a side table or a kitchen drawer or something like that that has things like notebook pens and pencils in it all right, even if you have to tie the pens and pencils to the drawer, if you have to tie them, do it. Even if you tie just one of each to the drawer, do that so that they don't all disappear, okay? Um, because pens and pencils around here have a habit of walking off, mostly with my help as I walk them into another room. Um, and then I sit here at my desk and going, 
where am I going to get it all from? I don't know. All my pens have gone. Okay, so, yeah, always have notebooks and pencils because you never know what you've got to write down at any one time. Okay, so I'm a notebook hoarder. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm glad you love the topic. Thank you. Thank you, Suburban Hillbilly. I really do appreciate that. Duct tape or gaffer tape, depending on where you live. Now, I know you guys in the States call it duct tape. We over here call it gaffer tape. It's that wonderful silver tape that um, we all have for sticking stuff together that wants to move and it shouldn't be moving. We don't want it to move. Okay. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Uh, mountain grandma's in the house. Hello. Okay. So... The really cool thing about duct tape and gaffer tape that people don't realize, um, and I don't think a lot of people actually do realize this, you don't need half as much as you think you do, okay? The reason being it is designed to, if the more you move it, the more the thing moves, so if it's something that's flapping, the more it's going to stick to itself, the more it's going to hold it down, Okay. The only way you're going to get it off is if either oil or water. Okay, so they're the only things that are is kryptonite. But the more that something flaps about or moves about, the tighter the tape actually sticks to the item because the friction actually forces it to stick to itself even tighter, which is really great for all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, duct tape, gaff tape, always have it in the house. Um, WD-40. If it doesn't move and it should be moving, you want to have the WD-40, okay? We have always got a can of WD-40 around the place. We've even got one in the car. We've got one in the kitchen. We've got one in the shed. We've got one in the office. We've got, you know, WD-40 is great, okay? You, you've got to love that stuff, all right? Um, now, I know it's available here in the U UK. I know it's available in Europe, and I know it's available in Australia and New Zealand, I don't know if it's available to you guys in the States, and I'm really sorry if it's not, but it's basically the stuff that makes stuff move that isn't moving that you want to move, like taps, okay, um, or spigots or whatever you want to call them. Hang on. Right, let's have a look at pipe. Renee says, uh, place was abandoned for several years and let go before that Jim has worked so hard we have grapes and rhubarb and orchard with pears apples peaches and cherries oh, I was able to can grape juice this year awesome Renee I have two little grape vines that were bought for me by my sister for my birthday this year um I've just done a short because they've started to sprout uh they've grow they're growing an inch a day I can't even believe it. They're actually growing an inch a day. Um, scissors seem to go walk about in my house. Yes. And scissors. Yes, scissors are definitely on the list. I haven't quite got there yet, but scissors are definitely on the list. And don't ever touch my fabric scissors. Yes. Now, there's a really good reason for that, and I will explain it as we get to that. Um, yeah, WD-40. Absolutely. No worries, Ginger. Hello, Miss Not For Nothing Homestead. How you doing? Yeah, scissors seem to be the one thing that disappear in this house as well. I actually have a tin for scissors that is here that is supposed to have all our different scissors in them. But at the moment, it's half empty because half the scissors are missing. Now, I've got all sorts of scissors in here because I have all sorts of scissors in here, right? I've slowly been... These are my really good dressmaking scissors. They are only for fabric, okay? The reason they're only for fabric is because they're never supposed to be sharpened, okay? These types of steel dressmaking scissors are not meant to be sharpened. You guys didn't know that, did you? Okay, so if someone comes along and actually blunts them, it's going to cause major issues for your, not, your scissors and it will literally destroy them, okay? It would destroy the blade because the blade is actually designed never to be sharpened, okay? So all of, all of my, my auntie, my great aunt was a 
dressmaker back in the day she used to make clothing for the aristocracy she was a very high up high-end dressmaker all she used to do was wipe the blades of her her scissors in her hair to get the hair oil natural oil off her hair so it doesn't work if you use product in your hair uh, in your hair but if you've got just natural hair without any product in it you can just wipe the blades and it actually cleans the blade i know it's weird but yeah now these ones i love these these are wallpaper scissors i use them for all kinds of paper cutting that i just you know because they're big long ones okay i've also got these ones now these are paper shredding scissors but they're also useful in the kitchen if you've got things like herbs to chop up they're usually quite useful for those and i've got various little cheapy little ones for the kids and stuff i've also got kitchen shears and just you know yeah so guys if you're listening don't touch your missus's dressmaking scissors especially if she's got specific dressmaking scissors you will destroy them she will come after you with what is left of them and she will make you buy you a new pair okay because you have literally decimated her scissors and proper dressmaking scissors can run you as much as 500 pounds a pair depending on how good they are anywhere from like 50 pound to 500 pounds in fact i've got a friend who makes scissors she's a bladesmith but she actually specializes in dressmaking scissors very very special ones and she hand makes every one and they're two and a half grand and i will tell you this if i ever won the lottery and was able to get her to make me a pair of scissors <coughs> pardon me and tanny took them and cut something other than fabric with them i'd have a new veg bed that's all i'm saying that's all i'm saying i'm just saying that i'd have one less mouth to feed that's all i'm saying okay so tip wd-40 will also take two scuff marks off the floors yes definitely rinse well if you have pets um my family learned early do not touch my sewing scissors wd-40 is made in the u.s cool one use for wd-40 is good to spray sore muscles it is it's also really good for getting crayon off the walls yeah so <laughs> okay also you want to have a good sewing kit now if if you're just starting out speaking of scissors mm. pardon me sewing kit so needles i've got these little thread scissors these you can pick up really really cheaply they're just for snipping threads um very cheap and you get about five in a packet when you buy these because they do they don't last forever obviously um but you want to have a nice little pair of scissors some cotton a couple of buttons um you know hi al how you doing welcome in sharing is key <laughs> it's good to see you mate so yeah a couple of little buttons a little measuring tape really important to have a measuring tape i got about 30 of them around the house i can't find one right now but i got about 30 of them around the house they're another thing that goes walk about all the time okay um so anything like if you find little buttons around the house or people lose buttons or someone's getting rid of a shirt cut the buttons off keep the buttons do all of that stuff because you never know when they're going to come in handy for something else okay um yeah but your basic sewing kit you just need to have needles and threads around the place like a black one a white one maybe a blue one a red one you know if, if that's what you're just starting out with that's all you need um we've just gone through scissors <laughs> um the other thing you need is cloths now cloths for cleaning dusting drying and polishing okay the other thing that you can do is 
my I grew up with our family had a rag bag now that rag bag was used for several things it was basically clothes that weren't good enough to go to the charity shop that we weren't going to have anymore but it had enough fabric on it that could be used for a cloth for polishing or for doing messy cleanups okay so old towels used to go in there for you know just cleaning up bathrooms and stuff like that um all of that kind of stuff really really cool the other thing is that if you have a rag bag and you need to mend something and you've got you need a patch you could probably find something in the rag bag that's going to fix it okay so that that's always a good idea to have a rag bag around the place or if the kids want to learn how to sew something or they want to do something send them to the rag bag to go and get something out of there you know um so yeah cloths but there so there are cheaper ways of doing it you don't have to go out and spend hundreds of pounds on cloths and things again what i would suggest is if you are going to be buying up cloths and things to replace kitchen towel and all of that kind of stuff from your house go to the catering supply places again to get tea towels etc um because you can get glass polishing cloths you've got proper heat cloths for bringing things out of the ovens etc um i prefer a heat cloth to oven mitts i find oven mitts are very constrictive and i've dropped more things with oven cloth oven gloves on or especially the ones that are tied together um than anything else and i've seen some pretty nasty accidents with the ones that are tied together so i never suggest anyone has any of those yes they look pretty and yes they're cool but you know i, I prefer to have hot cloth which is completely different um but yeah if you are going to invest in getting some new cloths and things i would go to catering supply places those they've number one they're not expensive number two you're going to get 10 to 20 in a pack which is going to do you a lifetime if you look after them number three they are built for restaurant use they are made to be used and hammered most restaurants replace their cloths etc every two to five years so and they get hammered so if you're just using it as a home a home person they're gonna last for years and years and years and years because they are good quality cloths okay let's have a look we have always had a rag bag awesome wet cut old we cut old towels up for dish cloths yes if I have holes, socks with holes that work good for dusting and polishing silver, yes, they do. This this is all the stuff. This is the stuff that you need to remember. It doesn't have to be expensive. The other next thing I have is an assortment of hand tools. Now it's all very well having drills and jigsaws and routers and table saws and all of that kind of stuff, but every single one of those things requires electric. Okay. If you can get yourself a little bow saw, maybe a normal saw um, or even a hacksaw, a, a hammer, some screwdrivers, a socket set, Allen keys, don't forget the Allen keys, don't forget the Allen keys. And there's two different varieties of Allen keys. And I would make sure that I've got a set of both because you never know. The amount of stuff that we've bought over the years that has required Allen keys to put it together and they haven't supplied the Allen keys, it's a nightmare. So on that, I would say a selection of screws, nuts, hooks, bolts, nails, all of that stuff. Now, if you get, um, you can recycle screws and hooks and things like that. Not so much nails, you can do it. But I wouldn't do it on a project that needs anything to be really, really stable. Um, <coughs> because they where they're bent, if they're bent, 
I would use them for something like an outdoor raised bed. If I was putting a raised bed together, I would probably use a recycled nail on that. But keep them all. Keep them all. Absolutely keep them all. And all you have to do is leave them in some cola overnight and it takes the rust off. I'm not even kidding. And give them a bit of a buffing with some, um, with a like a steel wool pad. And they come up amazing, like brand new. Okay, so you also want to have a selection of plugs. Now, they could be sink plugs for your sink or bath or stuff like that because you never know when they might just conk out and they've had enough. Uh, also electrical plugs um, just to replace those just in case things go a little bit squirrely or it's not looking quite right or maybe the dog got to it or, you know, it's just not looking quite how it should do. It's always good to have spare plugs around the place, um, especially if you're buying secondhand stuff. It's always good to put a new plug on it because you never know if it hasn't been pat tested, um, then there may be something going on with the plug. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Um, fuses and fuse wire, always really important to have because you never know because over here I know you guys in the states don't have it but here in the UK there are fuses in every single plug not only in the wall but in the plug <laughs> okay so if the fuse blows then you need to replace the plug and the fuse okay because it tends to melt some of the plastic in the plug and you'd rather have all of it new so yeah um light bulbs always have spare light bulbs if you're moving into a brand new place you can absolutely guarantee the sink the bath and probably the kitchen sink don't have plugs in them and you'll be finding that you may have one light bulb for the whole house so always have a selection of light bulbs um matches and lighters always have some spare around the place even some waterproof matches if you can get hold of them just in case you know because you never know um yeah so that's our miscellaneous what have we been doing in the chat if you get pink tools the hubby doesn't take them um yeah i i did test that theory um tanny doesn't care <laughs> he really doesn't care if i need a screwdriver i'm going to use it whether it's pink purple or whatever is his answer um go to cart boot sales for which in the States is called a swap meet, by the way. Um, for hand tools, the stuff in home DIY stores are overpriced rubbish. A lot of them are. Uh, car boots, the one pound boxes are treasure chest. Yes, they are. Um, I saw somebody chucking out a floor lamp the other week. I took the plug, flex, and bulb too. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Swap meets are great. Yeah, we have they, we call them car boot sales over here because it's basically what people are selling out of the, their car boot, right? So that that's what we call them over here. But they are a treasure tro trove. We haven't had many of them over the last couple of years for obvious reasons, but you know they're coming back. But you got to get there early. You got to get there early. And the other thing I would like to say as well is. Try not to barter with people that are selling at car boot sales. A lot of them, some of them do it for a living. I get that. But they're putting prices on there that are really, really reasonable. And unless it's something that's really kind of, really, do I have to pay this much for that? You know, unless you're buying several things off them, don't ask for a discount because that's actually probably the way they're feeding their family that week. Be nice. Okay. Mm. Chalky milk, yum. Right. The next thing I want to cover is first aid kits. Now, um, Okay, depending on the need, okay, I'm, I'm just writing some notes really quickly because I, I forgot a couple of things and I just had to write those down really quick so I don't forget again. Okay, so 
the basics that you need in a first aid kit are bandages, like two or three different widths of bandage, okay? Band-aids, all sorts of different varieties of band-aids. The most band-aids I have in mine are finger band-aids. They're the ones with the split so that it actually wraps around your finger properly. They're amazing because I'm always cutting my fingers. Surgical tape, really, really cool. Always have some of that. Gauze, antiseptic wipes and disinfectant. That's it. Okay, that's all you really need in, in a first aid kit. I'm not going to kid you. That's it. All right. There's nothing in there that you can't really kind of take care of if, you know, you've got all the things. Now, depending on who your family is and what their needs are, will very much depend on other things that you put into your first aid kit. If it was my kids, when I had kids, my kids were little. Um, sutras. Sutras were a big one. Okay. Um, antiseptic cream, another one. Vicks Vapor Rub, another one. Um, you know, those things. I also had things like um, kids Benadryl and stuff like that. Um, you know, so children level pain relief, those kinds of things. But also then you've got to look at personal needs like medication. If you use medical equipment, have you got a, per, a portable version of that? that you can use that or that is battery operated is it battery operatable in case the electricity goes off for whatever reason there's places in the uk that are having rolling blackouts it's really necessary to know you know um if your equipment is portable or battery operated so that you can um have that as backup Super glue is another really, really good one. Now, the only reason I haven't mentioned super glue is some people don't know how to use it properly. Um, some people do. Obviously, it's a really good one. If you've got, like, if you've sliced your finger open, the first thing you want to do is to try and get that skin down as fast as possible. So, and to try and stop the bleeding, but you need to stem the bleeding before you use the super glue. So you don't use the super glue until the bleeding stopped. So applying pressure to it, and I'm using this finger because I'm actually missing a piece off this finger. I've cut it so many times. Um, you know, you want to stop the bleeding first and then with that piece of skin. And once that's pretty much stopped, then you want to super glue it because if you super glue it before you actually let the bleeding stop, you're going to have problems, major problems. So don't use super glue if you're not used to using it. If you can get onto one, try and go to a first aid class. There's plenty of them around. St. John's Ambulance do them over here. Um, there's other community ones that you can do as well. They're always really useful to have around the place. But, you know, it, it really is, the first aid box is definitely different in every household you go to. Now, if you're in the kitchen a lot, you might want to have burn cream in there. Um, I have pawpaw ointment um, in mine um, because that is one of the best things that I have found for burns. Um, I want to see if I can pull it up. Um, uh, do, 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 do. There's a specific brand, Cura. Is it Lacura? Um, no, 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 that's not it. There we go. Okay, Lucas. Okay, Lucas Paw Paw Ointment. All right, now this stuff, can I just say? saved my son um some very serious scarring when he was a baby it didn't matter what we used we used everything that we were told to use we tried everything okay and that little boy had a bleeding uh, a proper bleeding nappy rash that was so awful he was hospitalized and we tried everything 
okay and it wasn't until we tried the pawpaw ointment that it literally dried up that nappy rash in less it stopped it bleeding within an hour within six hours of it used it started drying up overnight you wouldn't have believed it was as bad as it was the day before that stuff was amazing and i've used it for burns ever since and i was put on to it because a friend of mine that i was working with she did a dumb thing and she opened up an overheated radiator cap it blew up in her face and the only thing that saved her face was the pawpaw ointment now they have had issues with contamination in it in recent times in that particular brand but it was all recalled um i'm not sponsored by them i'm not affiliated i just think it's a wonder product honestly and it's the only one that i found that is um pure enough that you know doesn't have so many additives in it that it makes it ineffective okay antihistamines antiseptic cream hydrolyte yeah all of those things if that's what you think you need and have in your first aid kit that is fine you know we do have um, antihistamines in ours uh, for various reasons and we have a selection of them because they're not all the same antihistamines have two specific different chemicals in them that are the antihistamine so we have both but we also have one which are two separate things by the way we also have one that has both in it for very severe cases so we've got three different antihistamines antiseptic cream is great i prefer to have antiseptic liquid like Dettol or tvp uh tcp um rather than the creams because the creams can go off whereas the disinfectant liquid does not okay once you open antiseptic cream it has a shelf life um and it, it's it's not as long as you think it is germaline is a good one to have yep the poor poor cream worked for my son's eczema when he was little yeah absolutely germaline does con contain local anesthetic which is is really cool and you can get little um local anesthetic patches that look like little band-aids you can get those as well if that's what you want to get but like i said this is all like what i mentioned is the very basics of what you need in a first aid kit at home it very much depends on your family your family's needs your needs you know what you will have in your first aid box but two of the main ones are your medications make sure you've got medications in there spare ones or extra supplements whatever it is that you take in that box if you use herbal medicines etc have spare ones in the box keep them all together try to keep them all together okay have the things that you use in your family in that box first aid kits do you can buy one but what i found is that they're overpriced and they have a lot of stuff that you may not use um so i would go and buy the things separately and put your own together to be honest my opinion that's up to you if you want to go out and spend 200 pounds on a first aid first aid kit go ye ahead totally up to you that's your prerogative okay but if you're just starting out all you need are the very very basics okay but medication and making sure that your equipment you have an, a portable version of your equipment that is usable if there are blackouts is important um especially like if you've got someone who's on oxygen for example you need to make sure that you've got a generator so that that gen you know that that they or they have a portable oxygen unit so that that can happen when you know the electric goes off so you know it, it's all about those things okay i am over the moon with all this information i'm so glad you're going to detail for people no problem none at all this is such a brilliant live it's why i love you miss you're a fantastic soul oh al thank you thank you so much sweetheart yeah so this is the point right i spent an hour 
scouring Google to find lists of stuff that are needed by people who are starting urban homesteading. 97% of it was unnecessary. 97% of it was Amazon lists for other people selling products, trying to get you to buy those products so that they could get some money. There's nothing wrong with that, except it doesn't give you the right information. It gives you some information and it's selling a lot of stuff that you may or may not need. You may or not may not have the resources for. The bottom line when it comes to urban homesteading and self, um, self-sufficiency, okay, is this. You make do with what you have around and you make it work for you, okay? That's the point, you know? You become more reliant on what you have and see the things around you in a different way so that you can reuse what you have and you take away that impact that you're having either on landfill or of the environment or whatever else, okay? That's the point. You don't want to be costing yourself a lot of money because you want to be doing these things. However, yes, there are purchases that will be needed to be made, okay? Yes, there will be things that need to have to be purchased. Those things will be an investment. They're not just buying things because someone told you it was a good idea. The point is start with nothing. Start with the basics. Start with what you've got and move from there, okay? You don't have to go out and buy all of the stuff. Even if you're doing sourdough baking, you don't need to have all of the baskets and all of the things and all of the mixes and all of the stuff. A jar with some flour and water in it, you know, and a baking sheet. That's it, you know. That's all you're going to need. Or you can use your cake tin. Or you can use, you know, if you've got a Dutch oven, use the Dutch oven. Whatever. The point is, don't let it stop you from doing what you want to do just because you don't have the exact thing that someone's telling you that you have to have right now because you don't necessarily need it, okay? Um, it's just, we're about to wrap up, guys, I swear, I promise. I know it's gone a bit long for today. My mother was on oxygen. The generator saved her many times. Unfortunately, we lost her a few weeks ago. I am so sorry, darling. Sweetheart, my love, my heart goes out to you. I'm, I'm really sorry. But, yeah, the generator is could be a life-saving thing for so many people. I started life with nothing and I still have most of it left. Yep, there you go. See? All right, guys. So, again, these episodes are being written up for a PDF format leaflet or booklet that's going to be coming out um, around about July. If you're on Patreon, the first episode transcripts are going to be out on there this week. Ta-da! Um, there is a link to my Patreon below. I have made that so cheap, it's ridiculous. Um, but I want everyone to have the information if they can. All of the all of the proceeds that go from the Patreon at the moment and from the sale of this booklet when it comes out will be going towards buying seeds and um, equipment like more pots and compost and stuff like that for taking seeds to the food banks so people can buy their own food um yeah or they can grow their own food sorry oh my goodness words is hard man um <laughs> so yeah just do keep that in mind next week we will be looking at i'm not sure yet you'll have to come back and find out ha <laughs> ha don't go into debt buying stuff. Save up and use cash. Don't use a credit card. All of that right there. Yes, Miss Annette. All right, my guys, I will see you later. I want to say thank a big thank you to all of you for being here today. I really have appreciated your company. I hope you've really enjoyed um, this.
this episode of um, Introduction to Urban Homesteading. And I will see you next week. Except if you go over to Mr. Kettle Kitchen's channel tomorrow at 5 a.m. GMT, which is, I think it's, is it 9 p.m. your time, Mr. Tiny? He does a late night Friday live and you will find me there. Yes, you will. So it's 5, 5 a.m. GMT. So UK time, it's 5 a.m. tomorrow morning or it's tonight for you guys in the US. Um, I will be on that live and I will see you then or I will see you next week. I love you guys heaps. Mwah. Bye.